solar eclipse is this the end time prophecy did solar eclipse happen when jesus died what about when noah was preaching to the people in nineveh on april 8th we're expecting a solar eclipse and there's been a lot of videos circulating about prophetic significance that it has for the believers a sign of the end times because something is happening in the heavens that's signifying something should be happening on the earth now a solar eclipse is when the moon gets between the sun and the earth and someone on the surface of the earth cannot see part or all of the sun a solar eclipse is different than a lunar eclipse whereas a solar eclipse occurs when the moon passes between the sun and the earth causing the moon to cast a shadow on the earth a solar eclipse occurs when the earth is between the sun and the moon causing the earth to cast a shadow on the moon on april 8th a total eclipse will be visible from some parts of the united states and a partial eclipse will be visible from all of the united states now total solar eclipses are generally frequent so it's not something unusual two total solar eclipses happen every three years however total solar eclipses that can be seen from the united states are not as frequent the last one was in 2017 it lasted about two minutes and 42 seconds the one on april 8th is said that it will last about four minutes now concerning the solar eclipse and Nineveh we know according to NASA that there is an eclipse that took place on June 15th 763 BCE an eclipse that was noticed in Nineveh the capital city of the Assyrian Empire the Bible says that the prophet named Jonah preached to Ninevites and this happened sometime in mid 700s BCE now is it possible that the eclipse was connected to Jonah's preaching perhaps the timelines overlap but we actually cannot be certain Assyrian records state that the eclipse occurred and dated using their timekeeping system the NASA data has been matched to the Assyrian records which gives historians confidence about the dating based on the Assyrian records some scholars still debate this 763 BCE date but majority do accept it now nowhere in the Bible does the scripture signify that it was a solar eclipse that caused the preaching of Jonah to bring about great revival to the people of Nineveh now the other thing that I want to highlight is concerning Jesus's death and a solar eclipse physicist from Cambridge and astrophysicist from Oxford published an article in the globally leading scientific journal Nature arguing that a lunar eclipse took place on Friday April 3rd 33 AD and was visible from Jerusalem appearing blood red in color interestingly that this event confirms the 33 AD date of the crucifixion of Jesus Christ this could be a confirmation of what the scripture teaches us on the day that Jesus was dying where the sun went dark and eventually the veil was torn in the temple as our Savior was dying on that Friday now concerning the future the solar eclipse and the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ we have to understand is the Jewish eschatology separates the history into two sections this age and the age to come Jesus himself spoke of this age and the age to come Matthew 12 32 Mark 10 30 Luke 18 30 Luke 20 34 through 35 and so this present age is marked by sin sickness curses demons and, and evil the age to come is marked by eternal life resurrection end of death end of suffering the reign of Jesus Christ now what separates this age and the age to come is what the Bible calls the day of the Lord the day of the Lord will bring this age to an end and begin the age to come now in Zechariah we see that the day of the Lord will be when the Lord will come and deliver his people Israel from the surrounding attacking nations Zechariah chapter 14 is a classic example of this concept it even describes a darkening of celestial bodies now could it give a hint to an eclipse that will take place perhaps but I do want to give a little background of the coming of the Lord that we do need to keep in mind during the Mount Olive discussion disciples asked Jesus these three questions Matthew 24 verse 3 says this now as he sat on the Mount of Olives disciples came to him privately saying 
tell us when will these things be? That's the first question. And what will be the sign of your coming? Second question. And of the end of the age. Now, the coming of Jesus and the end of age is pretty much the same event. So, I want you to notice how Jesus answers them. When will these things be? He's talking about the destruction of Jerusalem, which Jesus responds to in Matthew 24, says it's going to happen within this age. And then they also ask the question, what is the sign of your coming? Now what people don't realize is that the sign of Jesus' coming is His public appearance, Matthew 24, 30. The sign of Jesus' coming, the day of the Lord, are not these bad things that will precede the end of age. The sign of His coming is His public appearance. And Jesus breaks it down in Matthew 24, a few things about this day of the Lord, this coming of the Lord that we just referenced in Zechariah is talking about there is going to be a darkening of celestial bodies. Jesus says that His coming will be after tribulation. Jesus says that it will also appear in heaven, so Jesus will appear in heaven. His coming will be as visible as lightning. At Jesus' coming, all the tribes will mourn. Jesus' coming will be seen. It's not a secret event. The coming of Jesus will be on the clouds with power and glory. At Jesus' coming, there will be a sound of a trumpet, meaning it's going to be loud. And Jesus will come not by Himself, but with saints. And at His coming, the day of the Lord, we know that the dead will be raised and they will be changed to meet with Him in the air and that His feet will land on the Mount of Olives in Jerusalem and He will destroy the enemies of Israel who surrounded Israel at the time and establish His kingdom forever from Jerusalem and will begin the age to come. So this is the sign of Jesus' coming, visible, loud, glorious. Jesus also talks to us about the signs of the end of age. As this age is coming to an end, we will begin to see an increase of false messiahs and fake religions. We will see an increase of wars in the world. We will see an increase in hunger. We will see an increase in earthquakes. We will see an increase in incurable sicknesses and pandemics. We will see an increase of persecution of Christians, a huge surge of wickedness. We will see the love of believers growing cold. We will see also world evangelism and Israel will be back in the land because Jesus is going to have to land on the feet of Mount of Olives and defend the nation of Israel against its surrounding enemies. So we see that this age is coming to an end. The age to come is coming. The day of the Lord is going to split these two ages. That's according to Jewish end times world view. Jesus is coming it's going to be glorious, it's going to be powerful, it's lighting, sound and all of this stuff and Zechariah gives us a sign that most likely something is going to happen with celestial bodies as well. Now, so could this April 8th be the sign that the Lord is coming? I don't think so. Well, the Bible tells us nobody knows when Jesus is coming. So the fact that we have a date for that, that is right away uh, telling us that He is not coming on April 8th because we wouldn't really know about that. The other part is that April 8th is actually not that dramatic as compared to the biblical day of the Lord. The eclipse on April 8th is predicted to be about four minutes long, but the eclipse of the day of the Lord, it's going to last all day. The celestial events of the day of the Lord will be far greater than four minute blackout. Now could April 8th be a sign of the end times? Yeah, but is this the sign of us coming closer to the end of age? I don't think so. Why? Because end of age, the coming of the Lord is really around Middle East events. It's not going to happen in Texas. It's not going to be happening in the United States. And so it's very important that these modern day prophets and Facebook apostles and uh, YouTubers and people who love to generate a lot of views and clicks who kind of revolve everything around the United States, take a chill pill and realize that the world, biblical end times world does not revolve around Texas, New York, Seattle or our Western nation. It's around the Middle East. And we should be very careful not to read into natural events things that are not written by God. Lastly, God forbids us seeking guidance from the stars in the strongest of terms. Astronomy is the science of studying stars, planets and space. It's all about understanding how the universe works through observations and experiments. And that's actually very good because Psalms 19.1 it says the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament shows His handiwork. Now, astrology though suggests that celestial bodies influence human lives and traits. 
It's not based on science, it's not based on scriptures, but it's based on some idea, the Bible actually calls a divination, that connects us to the stars and to the universe in a spiritual way. Deuteronomy chapter 18 verses 10 through 12, the Bible is very clear for us not to look to the stars, practice divination, witchcraft or sorcery, cast a spell or being a spiritist because it's displeasing to God. Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 19, the Bible is also very clear, do not lift your eyes to heaven to see the sun or the moon or the stars, all the hosts of heaven and be drawn away to worship them and serve them. Meaning your source of guidance and direction is not in the stars. Because Psalm 37 verse 23 says, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delights in his way. It does not say that the steps of a good man are ordered by the stars. I like what Carmen in his classic America Again song said, don't look to the stars because astrology won't save you, your horoscopes won't save you. The Bible says these things are farce and if you're born again, you don't need to look to the stars for your answers because you can look to the very one who made those stars. While these signs can hint and tell us that we are living at the end of this age, the sign of the Lord's coming is going to be visible, public, glorious, loud appearance of our Lord Jesus Christ on the clouds with saints. Are you ready to meet Him? Nobody knows when that day will come. That's why we must live with hopeful expectation of the coming of the Lord that will usher the age to come. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe and share in the comments what you learned today. God bless you. Until next time.